At that same press conference, Trump told another, not just lie, but a, a strange story about how he never threatened to lock up Hillary Clinton. He never asked for that. And when his supporters said lock her up at his rallies, he said he told them they needed to stop that because it would be so bad for the country to jail Hillary Clinton. And he never wanted to do that. Right. And that is insane because it's not only blatantly untrue. We were all there. It's something we all lived through out loud. That was the exact opposite of what he's saying. It turns out there's a really good new book um, about this as a tactic, um, not just as a, a personal tick or a crutch for Trump personally, but a Republican tactic of the Trump era that they kind of flirted with a bit before he took control of the party. But now they do it whole hog all the time. Uh, the book is called Ministry of Truth. Democracy, Reality, and the Republicans' War on the Recent Past. It is by Steve Bennon, who's one of my oldest friends and one of the longest-term staffers on The Rachel Maddow Show. He has influenced my thinking about American politics as much as anybody has in the world. Steve's new book is a short book. It's just seven chapters, less than 200 pages before you get to the copious footnotes. Uh, but it explains not only um, that Republicans are doing this. You know, it's, it's not you. You're not just noticing this. Every once in a while, this is a thing they systematically do, and they do it in a way that Democrats don't. But he'd also, he also explains what they're doing it for. He says, quote, rewriting events from the recent past requires a different kind of audacity and ambition. At issue are events most Americans saw and remember. These aren't subjects of debate for historical symposiums or obscure developments that an average person might have a superficial understanding of. Rather, at issue are events from the last few years that people lived through and experienced firsthand. Republicans have nevertheless taken on the bold challenge of convincing people that their eyes have deceived them. Their memories are wrong. Independent sources of information are not to be trusted. And partisan changes to the recent past deserve to be embraced without question. It reflects a radical vision that Trump and his allies have imposed on Republican politics. This is now, after all, the party of alternative facts and truth isn't truth. As Trump's first year in the White House neared an end, Billy Bush, to whom Trump had bragged about assaulting women during the infamous Access Hollywood recording, Bush wrote an opinion piece for The New York Times explaining what he had learned about Trump. After noting that he had confronted Trump about inflating the ratings of his reality TV show, The Apprentice, Bush wrote that Trump had told him privately, quote, people will just believe you. You just tell them and they believe you. Years later, the Republican and his party adopted an eerily similar approach to describing the details of key events from our collective recent history, based in part on the expectation that Americans, quote, will just believe them. Steve says, quote, the stakes couldn't be much higher. The foundation of democracy rests in large part on a shared understanding of current events. When that understanding is deliberately corrupted by brazen partisans, the consequences can be dire. If you're, if you're interested in this as a tactic, again, just making stuff up about the very recent past we all lived through, Steve writes about how they applied it to everything from the Russia investigation in 2016 to the 2020 election to January 6th, right? Oh, it was Antifa. Oh, no, it was the FBI who did it. Oh, no, January 6th didn't happen. It was just a normal tourist visit. And then what they're settling on now is, yes, it did happen. It did happen. And they're all patriots for doing it. What about Antifa? Also, I mean, the one you hear every day from the Trump campaign and from Republican surrogates. Trump had the greatest economy ever when he was president, even though his economy wasn't as good as either the economy of Obama or Biden. Right. Even even his claims that he completed the wall, which he did not do. Why are they doing all these things? What's sir, what 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 purpose does it serve? Steve Bennon's book is called Ministry of Truth. It's out tomorrow. I will also tell you, if you're an audiobook person, um, I personally think this thesis and this book is important enough that I voiced the audiobook. So if you'd like to not just read the book, but have me tell you about it, you can also um, get the book that way. Uh, but I did that both because I love Steve and also because I think this book is brilliant and, and much needed and well-timed. Joining us now is my friend Steve Bennon, Rachel Maddow Show producer, editor of the Maddow blog, and author of the excellent new book, Ministry of Truth, Democracy, Reality, and the Republicans' War on the Recent Past, which comes out tomorrow. Steve! Congratulations on this. I know that you almost killed yourself writing this thing. Thank you for doing it. Yeah, I, I'm glad to have done it, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> so um, you concede from the very first pages of the book 
that arguments over history are not unusual for politicos of various kinds. But you're homing in on something quali qualitatively different here, which is about rewriting the recent past, stuff that we lived through. What is the tactical difference between lying brazenly about the recent past, things we all saw, instead of lying about things that maybe we all can't verify from our lived experience, you know, ancient history or, or stuff that happens in faraway places? Right. Republicans have targeted both. I mean, there's a culture we're going on right now I mean, with, with Republican officials at a variety of levels of government trying to change recent, change the history of things from generations past. The Civil War, the Revolutionary War, founding fathers. That's an important thing in terms of the Republican culture war, but there's a qualitative difference when Republicans target the recent past. It's more audacious. It requires them to try and overpower our memories and bully our memories into submission over things that we all saw, lived, and experienced. They, they, for example, we see them trying to tell us now that, that the Trump response to the COVID crisis was great. It was perfection. It couldn't have gone any better. We all know better. We all saw and experienced in firsthand what the Trump administration's response to COVID was, but nevertheless, they believe that our memories can be bullied into submission and their alternative reality and their alternative narratives can replace the ones we all know. But why, why do it then? I mean, if, as you describe, and I think you make a very good case that it requires a certain level of audacity to do this because they're asking us to literally disbelieve our own sense memories, the things that we saw and heard and experienced as human beings, not just stuff we read about, but stuff that we observed happen. Because it, it takes such audaciousness. That tells you something about how radical it is. But why is it worth it? Why, why are they doing it? I think there's two things to keep in mind here. The first is that, for by and large, Republicans feel like they don't have a choice. You know, in general, mm -hmm. when there are controversies that always happen in terms of politics, in general, politicians employ a certain crisis management playbook. They, they stick to certain PR strategies. They take their lumps and they move on. But when you send an insurrectionist mob to attack your own country's capital or when you fail to respond to a pandemic or when you cooperate to a certain degree with an adversary to take, take office in 2016, you can't just employ the usual tactics. They won't do. These are larger kind of crises. These are existential crises. And in, in, in large part, if we, the reality is that Republicans would never win another election if the public really started to understand and embrace these existing narratives the way they, they happen in reality. So I think the first thing is that they have no, feel like they have no other choice. But the second thing to keep in mind, which is equally important, is that Republicans feel as if they can get away with it. And in fact, when it comes to their base, they have gotten away with it. As of right now, there's ample polling data that shows that for a great majority of Republicans, January 6th was not an insurrectionist riot. There was no classified documents taken to Mar-a-Lago. Trump actually won the 2020 election. These are not things where a handful of fringe figures believe it. This is a, a, a situation in which the majority, a clear, overwhelming majority of Republicans believe this. And so Republicans do this at the highest levels because they feel like they can, they, because they feel like they can, they feel like they can get away with it. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's it's a really good assemblage of those things. And when you put it even just in the terms that you just do, I feel like it all starts to fall in place to me. Um, but I'll just tell our viewers, you know, like if, if you are flummoxed by the fact that Donald Trump both tells his followers that he completed the wall and also that he needs to be reelected so he can complete the wall, um, Steve <laughs> explains the psychology of that and its political impact. And it's both dire, but also um, it's helpful to have it spelled out so well. Steve Bennon's new book, Ministry of Truth, Democracy, Reality, and the Republicans' War on the Recent Past. It comes out tomorrow. Um, the audio book is read by a goofball amateur narrator named Rachel Maddow, but I still think it came out pretty OK. Um, Steve, my friend, thank you very much uh, for writing this. It is really important. I'm really glad you did it. Congratulations. Thank you so much.